How can we quickly and easily trace and test three-phase cables when several cables are bunched together with no markings or indication as to which phase is which? I had a message last week from a fellow Sparky who had, basically, been dropped in it at a factory. A machine panel needed to be temporarily moved for some building work to be carried out. The panel was disconnected by persons unknown without any markings or drawings having been made of where the three-phase cables were located before disconnection. I have been called in, he said, to reconnect the panel, but how do I know which cables are which? I have six loose ends and no idea which one is which. And what tests should I do to make sure that they haven't damaged the cables? This reminded me of a similar situation I had with a factory in Wales where a robot had been moved with no thought of how to reconnect it. There is more than one method to do this, but this is how I would do it. Let's say that this is what we have. The cables at the machine panel have been pulled out with no markings and no indication of which cables belong to which phase. The conduit is several metres in length and takes a diverse route along the wall and around some pipework. Fortunately, the connections at the electrical panel are still in place, and that's half the job solved already. Before you begin working on the installation, ensure that you've carried out a safe isolation and lock-off procedure, and always recheck for safe isolation after any absence from the work area, after a lunch break, after being left overnight, etc. There's a lot of truth in the saying, if the circuit is not dead, then you might be. As you would expect, there's a little bit of preparation to do first. This preparation stage actually makes the tracing and testing easier and less prone to mistakes, and it doesn't take long. Begin by marking up what we already know. Back at the electrical cabinet, the cables were still in their correct places, so we'll call this the known end. I would begin by giving each phase on the breaker a number if it is not already marked. If it is marked, it makes sense to use the marked labels. Having marked up the known cables, we can remove them from the terminals. Shown here, the cables are in pairs in each phase, so ensure that you keep these pairs of cables together. As soon as you remove a pair of cables, mark them up as shown here, starting with the number one pair. Do not remove the cables from two or three until number one is properly marked up. Now remove and mark up cable set number two while leaving set three in situ. Then remove and mark up cable set number three. Make sure that the ends of all six cables are physically separated from each other for now. And finally, remove the CPC or earth for that circuit from the earth terminal. What do we have so far? Six known, separated and disconnected ends plus the CPC. And at the other end of the conduit, we have six unknown ends plus the CPC. At the unknown end, we should now label each of the unknown cables. I've labelled them A to F here, and it doesn't matter which cable is which letter. It will all be sorted out in a few minutes. If the known ends are marked with letters, then use numbers for the unknown ends. The objective is to mark the two ends differently. We can move on now and begin the low ohms continuity tests. We will be looking for readings of just a few ohms. Start by nulling your test meter on the low ohms range. With two probes or clips connected together, we are looking for a zero reading. If the test meter cannot be nulled, 
then make a note of the null reading and deduct this from the measurements that follow. Open the leads and retest. This is your open circuit reading and gives OL for out of limits on my meter. When you start testing, remember to write the test results down. Do not trust your memory. Beginning with the phase 1 cables, as we've marked them here, we should first join the number 1 loose ends together with a connector block, crocodile clips or wagos, ensuring that both conductors are making good electrical contact with each other. Do not join the other pairs, otherwise you will not know which pair you are testing. Move to the unknown end now and low ohms test between A and B. If there is no low ohms reading, try A and C, A and D, and so on. If the tests from A to the others do not show a reading, move on and test B to C, B to D, etc. But we found a reading at A and E, so we can stop there and record the reading. This will only be one pair that gives a return signal. Mark this as number 1. Now move on and find the number 2 pair. At the known end, link the number 2 conductors. Now test B to C, B to D, etc. until we have a reading. We have a reading from B and C, so record this and mark the cables as pair number 2. Testing the phase 3 or number 3 cables is next. Link the number 3 conductors and carry out a low ohms test again. Notice that I've used a 3-way Wago and the reason for this will be apparent in a moment. We can ignore conductors A and E and B and C and go directly to testing D and F. This gives a reading, record it and mark the cables. This is pair number 3. Now we should test the CPC or earth cable. As there is only one CPC cable in this example, we will need a return path for the test signal, so connect the CPC to the third way of the number 3 Wago. At the unknown end, we know that number 3 wires are ends D and F, so test between the CPC and either conductor D or conductor F. We should get a return signal, and if we do, write it down and record that the CPC is continuous. Some three-phase systems will include a neutral, and if a neutral is present, then this should be tested in the same way as the CPC was tested. Remove the CPC from the Wago and put the neutral in its place and then test at the other end for continuity. Again, use the D or F conductors to test the neutral for continuity and record the result. We've now traced the conductors and we now know which conductors are paired together. And we also know that the CPC and neutral are both continuous. Moving on, we can now insulation resistance test the cables to make sure, as best that we can, that the PVC cable insulation has not been damaged, that there are no wires shorting out to where they shouldn't. Insulation resistance testing on the cables will involve putting a 500 volt DC test voltage onto the cables. Precautions must be taken to ensure that persons are not exposed to this voltage. The test voltage is high, but the actual current is low, so it's unlikely to be fatal. But the recipient will know about it, and injury may result from involuntary reactions to the 500 volts. Use crocodile clips to attach the test leads to the copper conductors, and keep your hands clear of the clips when pressing the button. Preparation for this test is simple, as there is no need to worry about sensitive equipment being in circuit as we've removed all the cables from the circuit. 
First, replace the CPC conductor into the earth bar to bring in any parallel paths, metal conduit or trunking, etc. And next, remove the neutral wire from the number 3 Wago. Now test between the points shown on the green chart, making sure that you are securely clipped onto the copper conductor. These are insulation resistance tests. How good is the PVC insulation? So we are expecting readings of at least 1 megohm, 1 million ohms. You will normally have readings much higher than this. My meter just happens to read 1,999 megohms as a maximum, but other meters may be higher. It all comes down to knowing your meter. Clip onto conductors A or E and test to all the other combinations, recording the results as you go. Now, connect to B or C and test everything except A and E, since we've done those tests already. Next is tests on D or F to just the CPC and neutral. Finally, on its own, the CPC to neutral. If the low ohms continuity tests and the insulation resistance tests pass, then we can continue with the installation or reconnection. Ensure that the cables are permanently marked with the correct phases. Following a set method such as this will ensure that each cable is traced correctly and that the cables are continuous and undamaged. In time, you may develop your own method of testing, and that is good. However you do it, good luck. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful and instructive. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.